All right, we have another video repair guide showing how to do the capacitor replacement on one of the Dell uh, motherboards that has the capacitor problems. This particular one is a desktop form factor of the Optiplex 745, but the same capacitor problems um, have you know, issues on the Optiplex 260s, 270s, 280s, 520s, 620s, 740, 745, and 755 Optiplexes. They all have that same type of problem. Um, so we're going to show you how to take the motherboards out, do the repair on it, and get the motherboard back up and running so that you know the unit will function properly. First thing, of course, you need to do is take the side panel off. Just slide the little lever. The panel comes off. Now we will need to remove several pieces to get where we can remove that power supply. Uh, I need to remove the CD drive. And then we'll have connector cables to disconnect. We need to remove the hard drive. You squeeze in on the connectors and it will just fold to the side. Then we'll need to remove the plug here. that goes to this back panel control. We'll also need to remove that back panel control. Then we can get to the screw that's underneath it. There's also screws that are holding in the power supply and fan assembly. Really, once you remove the hard drive, you'll see the capacitors that are causing the problems. Um, if you notice, these have gotten to the, pro to the point where the tops have totally busted open, and you can see down inside of them. Um, but anything, even just a bulging top, will cause a problem, and it can cause intermittent lockups, video problems, non-booting units at all, where you just get a maybe a flashing power light, and that's it. Um, lots of strange issues when the capacitors start going bad. And on the 520s, 620s, and the 700 series, it's the same five capacitors. They go out pretty much every time. So. A few more screws and a few more cables, and then we can get that motherboard out. Also need to disconnect this four pin power cable and the 24 pin power cable in the back. Sometimes this one is a bear to get off because the cables are so tight. You know, they don't give you very much cable to work with. You can remove this little cable tie that ties it to the front ties the power supply cable to that front panel cable and get it out of the way we may be able to get a little bit better grip on this one and we also have the SATA cable that needs to be unplugged and then there is one more screw in the back corner got it out and then we need to remove the hard drive SATA cable and unplug that front panel control cable that was tied into the power supply cable. Now we should be able to, with the little wiggling around, remove that power, uh, the motherboard past the cables.
and now you can kind of see the capacitors very well where the tops have busted on them. This particular one, the top is bulged some, but it's also bulging out the bottom of the unit. Uh, that's why that capacitor is at the angle that it is. It's because of that bulging bottom. So now we'll take it back over to our bench uh, with a soldering iron, replace those four capacitors, and get this unit back up and running. All right, here we are to do that repair work on that Dell Optiplex motherboard. We're going to be replacing the five capacitors that caused the problems on them, where you can see four of the five on this one have failed catastrophically, where they popped the tops or popped the bottoms of them. Um, so we'll replace those. We have one 1800 6.3 volt and four 2200 6.3 volt capacitors. Um, there is a kit available with the proper capacitors already selected, sizes and voltages and such available at our website at www.ccl-la.com under the Dell Repair section. Um, you do need to make sure that you know you're using low ESR, high temperature, and high ripple current capacitors. Uh, this is in the filter section for the power supply and the uh, CPU. So if you don't use the correct ones, um, you can still have problems with your motherboard even after replacing the capacitors. Um, again, like we stated on the previous video, when the capacitors start failing on these boards, you get all sorts of strange uh, problems with the boards. You can get no power up, you can get just a blinking orange power light and that's about it. You can get um, partial boots where it will like boot up to the Windows splash screen and then the machine will hang or you can get random hangs and lockups as you're running Windows depending on how much it's stressing the CPU since the capacitors are the power supply filter capacitors for the CPU the more processing it's having to do, the more power it takes, so the more the capacitors come into play and the, the more they fail, you know, the further along in the failing process they are, the less filtering they're able to do, so when the CPU needs extra power, they cannot provide it, and then you get the lockup on the computer. So we're going to show you how to replace those and get your board back up and running. Um, first thing you need to do is, of course, have your replacement capacitors. You'll need to have some solder desolder wick, a 30 watt soldering iron, and then we can get busy and do the repair here. First thing we need to do, of course, is find out the capacitors you're going to be replacing. That's these and these here. The easiest way to, to remove the old capacitors, since these are board uh, wave soldered at the uh, Dell plant, is we need to add a little bit more solder to that capacitor. And so basically we're just going to heat up and make a little bit more solder on the capacitor legs. Okay, And now we can use our desolder wick and now the solder will have more solder to grab a hold of to remove. Seems counter where you're adding actually adding more solder to remove the solder, but it does make the job easier. We're going back and basically what we're doing now is you heat up one leg and kind of tilt the capacitor work that leg out, heat up the other leg, tilt the capacitor, that leg pulls through, and just work back and forth until each capacitor is removed from the board. Now, <clears throat> on these, if you look where you just removed this capacitor, there's a circle. One side of the circle is shaded and has a positive symbol. That's the positive leg of the capacitor. If you look on the capacitors, one side has a gray stripe with negative symbols. That's the negative side of the capacitor. 
If you also look at the legs, one is shorter, that's the negative side, the positive side is the longer side. So when you're inserting the capacitor onto the board, you just want to make sure that the long side of the capacitor goes into the positive hole terminal, and then just slide it on, and then we turn, back, turn the board back over, and apply a little solder. And we have one replaced. Then you just take your diagonal cutters, snip off the remaining leg off the board, and we've replaced our first capacitor. Now we just need to move on to the next ones and so forth until we have replaced all five on the board. down. Three more to go. Didn't get quite all of the solder out of one of those holes. We'll just go back. Again, we need to put a little bit of solder there so that the solder wick can have something to grab a hold of. holes you know do, do go all the way through if the if there's not solder on the outside where the solder wick is at it doesn't have anything to start the wicking process so that's why we're adding a little bit of solder every once in a while to it just to make sure that there's some above the level of the board remaining 
legs. Now we just have one left to replace. Capacitor actually came all the way all the way off the board by itself. And there you have it, one repaired Dell motherboard from the Optiplex 745 series. Um, I say it's a common failure. Uh, during the time that these machines were being produced by Dell, um, there was some problems with the capacitors. It's pretty much industry-wide, not just Dell, HP, Compaq, Dell, Gateway. Everybody had problems with their capacitors at that time. Um, so. You know, it is a very common problem. It's not something that's, you know, maybe a hit or miss. It's, you know, if you have one of those machines, sooner or later you, you are going to have capacitor problems. But it is easy to repair, as we just saw.